S6 News starts now. First tonight at 5, the eastbound lane between State Street and County Route 111 in Valley Falls is back open following Wednesday night's train derailment. We're told all lanes westbound due to that derailment still are closed as we speak tonight. Crews are still working there to remove two rail cars from the Hoosick River. A 94 car train derailed. 10 cars went off the tracks. Officials urging people to still stay away from the scene so crews can focus on that cleanup. An autopsy conducted on the victim of Saratoga Springs' first homicide victim in six years has revealed the cause of death of Brianna Craig as asphyxiation. Now, Craig was found dead inside of her apartment complex on Tuesday. Her former partner, Sebastian Mobb, was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Anyone with information surrounding this investigation is asked to call the Saratoga Springs Police Department. Albany Academy closed today due to another threat received through a text thread. Yeah, this connected to a series of threats from earlier this week after messages saying don't come to school tomorrow surfaced on social media. Albany police officers have been at the school all day long for safety precautions. Police say the investigation into this is still ongoing. And Albany police asking for the public's help in finding more information about a homicide that took place back in September of last year. They say 25-year-old Jordan Harris of Albany was shot and killed. The incident taking place on Central Avenue. Harris was taken to the hospital where he later died. No suspects have been charged at this time. Police are asking that you call them if you have any information on the case. 11 people have now been identified in the NYPD attack on officers late last month, allegedly by asylum seekers. Seven of them have now been indicted. Police are still looking for five of the suspects, but some are saying this incident has triggered a wave of fear-mongering about immigrants and crime. CBS 6's Ashley Kusakanki is live in studio with us. Yeah, and Ashley, studies have been brought to our attention on claims that migrants actually make communities safer. We don't want to make the mistakes other people have made. Nobody does. And we've tried to do the best we can to ensure that there's no risk to the population. That was Saratoga Biochar Solutions President Bryce Meeker on the future of his company's plans to build what has been called a sewage sludge factory. The facility, which received site plan approval for Moreau Industrial Park in August 2022, would haul in tons of biosolids to then be recycled into a carbon fertilizer safer land application. But not everyone is on board. Assemblywoman Carrie Warner, one of more than 60 speakers at the two-hour meeting last night, raising concern about cancer rates in the area. That protocol, again, is sort of based on the notion that you're, you're dealing with a generally healthy community and standards which are appropriate for a generally healthy community, and that's not the context here. The DEC will review the application along with the public comments before making a final decision. For more on this story with extra content, visit CBS6Albany.com. Food insecurity, it's an ongoing issue here in the Capital Region and beyond, and we've covered it extensively. And tonight, the American Heart Association's Heart Ball taking place in Albany, looking to raise funds to support that very worthy cause. CBS 6's Craig Adams joins us live now from the ball, looking very dapper, yes. Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no thanks to you, Greg, of course, because you're the one who had to help me with this tie tonight. I'm in the studio. All right, thanks, Ray. You did look good, didn't all, you? Yeah. All up there, yeah. And I think our Lara Brand, if I'm not wrong, is, is, is hosting, right? Yeah. She's emceeing the event. Such a great cause there. Excellent. All right, lots of political buzz out of D.C. tonight. How old is too old to be president? As we look for answers, some strong words from the president. And some controversial words from one of our local members of Congress. The woman who seems to want to be vice president talks about what she would have done if she was VP last time around. New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik doubling down on her support for former President Trump's claims surrounding January 6th and the power of the vice president. Stefanik saying she would not have certified the 2020 election results on January 6, 2021 if she had been in Vice President Mike Pence's position. I don't think that was the right approach. I specifically uh, stand by what I said on the House floor, and uh, I stand by my statement, which was there so was you unconstitutional the overreach. Votes. There was unconstitutional unconst overreach in states like Pennsylvania. Stefanik is widely seen as a potential running mate for former President Donald Trump. Speaking to CNN's Caitlin Collins, Stefanik said she would be proud to serve in a future Trump administration, but is currently focused on her responsibilities as the Republican conference chair. 
The White House defending President Biden's mental fitness after a special counsel report reinforced concerns that many voters have about his memory. Last month, CBS 6 had an opportunity to get perspective from a New York representative on the topic of age. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand telling us the primaries on both sides for 2024 are pretty much settled with the current candidates, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, saying she has faith in President Biden. National correspondent Atra El Nishar reports on the political fallout. Let me say a few things. Now to our question of the day. Do you think President Biden is mentally fit for office? You can use your smartphone camera to scan the QR code and reach this poll. It should put highs generally in the lower to mid 30s Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Did you see that 60 on the board? I was going to say, but come on, 60s, though. Got to head south tomorrow. It's going to be even warmer yep. if we do that. Mm -hmm. All right, coming up in sports, the uh, college lacrosse season is officially underway in the Capital Region. CBS 6 Sports Director A.J. Pankowski is live at UAlbany for the Lady Great Dane season opener against Johns Hopkins. And the final Friday in the regular season for high school hoops. We dive into our game of the night in boys basketball between Catholic Central and LaSalle. And how about this? Our Tom Eschen has made a new friend, what she can do to help students learn about medicine. Actually, it might be quicker to tell you what she can't do. And two presidents, two cases of taking classified documents. We dive into why one man is facing charges and the other is not. Good stuff coming up later tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, AJ, thank you. Coming up in our next half hour, he's the presidential candidate no one's talking much about. We'll tell you why the DNC is not too happy, though, with RFK. This is Anne. She's a robot and she has a pulse. We'll get to know her a little bit better tonight and also tell you what she could mean for the pipeline of nursing in New York State. First at 5.30, your top stories and your weather headlines. Here is what you need to know. An autopsy conducted on the victim of Saratoga Springs' first homicide in six years has revealed the cause of death of Brianna Craig as asphyxiation. Anyone with information surrounding this investigation is asked to call the Saratoga Springs Police Department. The eastbound lane of 67 between State Street and County Route 111 in Valley Falls back open following Wednesday night's train derailment. We're told all lanes westbound due to that derailment will remain closed for now. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik doubling down on her support for former President Trump's claims surrounding January 6th and says she would not have certified the 2020 election results if she were in Mike Pence's position. In-depth coverage on all of these stories online, just head to cbs6albany.com. And we are enjoying another workforce. The Donald R. Klein Technical School in Hudson acquired the Ann Nursing Simulator in June. It has the ability to do everything from cough to vomit and can even speak. CBS 6's Tom Eschen and photojournalist Matt Whitlock introduce us to Ann right now. Oh! All right, well, coming up at 630, we'll tell you more about this program and how they hope investments like this can help turn around troubling trends in the nursing workforce. Former President Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, the only remaining GOP candidates in this year's primary, setting their sights to South Carolina. Both candidates are scheduled to make appearances in the state before the primary on February 24th. This after former President Trump won Nevada's Republican caucus last night. Trump won the South Carolina primary during the 2016 presidential race and has been polling very high against Haley. Meantime, as we get closer to this year's general election, a new NBC News poll shows 40% of registered voters say Trump's presidency was better than expected. Just 14% of voters say Biden's presidency has been better than expected. 44% say it's about as expected and 42% say it's worse. The White House says President Joe Biden has released a memo to help hold countries receiving U.S. weapons more accountable. The memo highlights the standards for foreign governments to receive U.S. military aid. This as Biden says Israel's conduct in Gaza has been over the top. However, a senior administration official downplayed the move and dismissed any suggestion that Israel's actions in Gaza were a motivating factor for the memo. The official says it was an opportunity to spell out publicly the existing standards set by international laws and was in the interest of transparency.
The Democratic National Committee filed a complaint with the Federal Elections Commission against Robert Kennedy Jr.'s presidential campaign. According to the DNC, the group American Values 2024 is making illegal contributions to Kennedy. The group is officially registered as a hybrid PAC, which prohibits it from being directly linked with the RFK campaign. Officials with the DNC say mega GOP donors appear to be using American Values 2024 to help RFK K get on ballots in states where he hasn't received enough signatures to appear as an independent. The Kennedy campaign has not yet commented on the matter. Supporting heart health here in the Capital Region. Tonight, the American Heart Association's Heart Ball taking place in Albany, looking to raise funds to support that cause. CBS 6's Craig Adams joining us now live from tonight's Heart Ball. Hey there, Craig. Hi there, Imani. Well, I am here with Brian O'Grady from uh, CDPH back to our studio. All right, thank you so much, Craig. Hey, it's a messy job, but someone's got to do it. We're keeping Craig Adams busy tonight. Up next, he digs in and chows down at the local restaurant that's preparing 700 pounds of chicken wings for Super Bowl weekend. And the late Kobe Bryant, immortalized in bronze, will show you what the new statue of the superstar looks like. When it comes to food for Sunday's big game airing right here on CBS 6, wings are by far at the top of the list for many on their game day menu. I like my pizza too. We sent our resident wing taster Craig Adams to Annabelle's in downtown Schenectady where they will be cooking up nearly 700 pounds of wings for this weekend's festivities. I'm Nick Miola. I'm average with dry weather returning through next week. And look, Steve's wishing us happy Valentine's I Day there. I saw that there. Yeah. Very nice. All right, coming up tonight on CBS 6, another school scare. We have the threat and reaction from school leaders. And we're getting more information about Saratoga's first homicide in years, what police are saying tonight about the killing of a young woman. Beyond the game and the commercials, Super Bowl Sunday is also about food. We've talked about it already yeah. and a lot of it. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares how much we usually eat. Hey there, everybody. It is the second pacing. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. I believe I gained a pound just watching Just that watching story. it. Yep. I know. I'm hungry Pretty now. Sure. Yep. All right. Yours, mine, ours. That's the approach to finances that experts say couples should use. Yeah. Each partner gets an agreed upon dollar amount, but the rest is combined into one account. That account to pay for shared expenses like the mortgage and the electric bill. According to bank rate analysts, two in five couples completely do combine their finances. Let's face it, you know, you are working together on these things, or at least you should be. You know, even people who choose to keep their money totally separate, you have so many joint bills that I think we need to have these conversations. Experts note 38% have a mix of joint and separate accounts, while only 24% keep their finances completely separate. More than one in four adults in the U.S. say keeping financial secrets from a partner is just as bad as having an affair. The Los Angeles Lakers immortalized the late superstar Kobe Bryant with a bronze statue. There it is right there. The 19-foot, 4,000-pound statue shows Kobe in his white number 8 jersey. From the night, he scored 81 points against the Toronto Raptors back in 2006. Bryant, his daughter, and several others, of course, died in a helicopter crash in early 2020. The statue is one of three that will be created to honor the five-time NBA champion and top scorer in Lakers history. Another will feature the star in his number 24 jersey. The third statue will honor him and his daughter, Gianna. I didn't get to see it really well there, but it looked pretty good, right? It looked great. Yeah. And being from L.A., this is a great way to remember him. Very nice. Yeah. All right, still to come here tonight, a new study out now surrounding immigration in our communities. Why advocates say it's in direct opposition to a current negative narrative surrounding migrants here in the U.S.